Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Liz, and in today's video, I'm sharing with you my top 10 high-end Dollar Tree DIYs from 2020. These are the projects that you guys loved this year, and I can't wait to share them with you again. For this first project, I loved finding these glass containers at Dollar Tree. They are a really thick glass and I love the shape of them and they were just a really great quality. So I went ahead and picked up three of them and I took them outside and I spray painted them with two coats of a flat black spray paint. One of my favorite finds from this year has got to be these adhesive cork sheets that they have in the craft section at Dollar Tree. These are awesome, you guys. You can really do a lot of projects with them and I love that they're adhesive. So I started by using my cutting mat to measure out two inch strips. Now I ended up cutting them into one inch strips, but you could do the same thing no matter what your measurements are. I like using a cutting mat because you can use it to figure out your measurements and you can also use it to just draw straight lines and it's just a really handy tool to have. I'll link the one I use down in the description box. So you wanna cut your strips. I did go back and cut these into one inch strips and since they are adhesive, you don't have to add any additional glue. Now I like to add in some kind of filler. You could also add like Dollar Tree sacks just so you don't have to use all of the rocks or whatever you're using as your decorative item. Then I'm gonna put in some natural rocks from Dollar Tree and I'm also going to add in a succulent. I did this with all three and this project is still sitting out in my master bedroom. I love the way it looks. So for this next project, you're going to need a clear tray that they sell in like the party section at Dollar Tree. And you're also going to need some nautical rope. You can buy the individual ones at Dollar Tree or you can buy it in a big spool off of Amazon. It's around the same price. I usually buy mine in a big spool, but it's totally up to you. I will link to the one that I use down in the description box. So start in the middle by putting some hot glue in the very middle of your tray. And then you're going to press the rope down and start wrapping it around itself, making sure that you don't see any of the tray underneath. Then as I go, I'm gonna add in additional hot glue. As I get more around the tray, I start adding in more hot glue just to hold it in place. You don't have to do it the whole way around, but you wanna add enough so that if it's sitting upright, the rope's not gonna start coming off of your tray. And just keep wrapping the rope. If you're using the Dollar Tree rope, this is one piece of rope that it covered so far. And then all I'm gonna do is just cut it off so it's not frayed on the edge, and then I'll add in another piece so it makes a big, continuous piece. Once you get to the end of your tray, you want to make sure that you use the rope so that you don't see any of the plastic tray. So you're gonna keep adding hot glue until you get to the very edge of your tray so that you cannot see it at all. Next, you can cut off two handles that are the exact same size using some more of your rope. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the back side of my tray. So with your other handle, just eyeball it and try to make it as e even as possible. I'm also gonna be adding in some duct tape to the back to hold the handles in place. I don't know if this is necessary because you're not gonna be hanging it from the handles, but you know you can add it if you want. Now this project has been on my mantle since till about Christmas time when I took it down. I love it. You guys love this project so much and it's just a really simple and easy tray to make. So I grabbed two of these, I guess they call them rugs at Dollar Tree. Um, you know, I don't think they're big enough to be rugs, but I grabbed two of them. 
I'm gonna put them so that the back sides are facing into each other. And you could always sew this, but I'm gonna show you an easy way to put this pillow together with hot glue. So I'm gonna hot glue the top edge, and then I'm gonna hot and glue the side, making sure that all those fringe pieces are sticking out. Then I'm gonna hot glue the bottom. To fill this, I'm gonna be using this Buffalo Snow. I always buy this on clearance after Christmas, so this is a great time of year to be looking for it. A lot of times the craft stores or Walmart will have it really inexpensive. And I'm just going to stuff the Buffalo Snow in it to fill this pillow, and then I will gently come in, pull up those little fringe pieces, and hot glue it in place. Now to give it more of like a decorative element, I'm gonna be using some cream yarn and then I'm also using this embroidery needle, which is a pretty large needle. I'm gonna start by creating a pattern on the top with my yarn. Now to create this, it's a little hard for me to explain, but if you just watch the method of how I'm creating this stitch, it's really easy, it's not tricky at all. Just kind of follow the same steps all the way across and you'll be okay. You just wanna make sure that you try to get each of your stitches about the same distance apart. That's gonna make it have a much more uniform look. Now I did make a mistake of not putting enough yarn on my needle. So when I got about halfway across, I ended up having to tie it off and starting a new piece, which was kind of a bummer. So maybe use more yarn than you think that you're gonna need to get across. But once I got to the very end, I'm just going to tie it off so that it doesn't come unfrayed. I'm also going to create that same stitch pattern at the bottom of my pillow as well. And really you guys, for $2 plus stuffing, I think this is a great pillow that you can create for your home. Next up, we're going to put together a fun wreath that I created this year. Now, I know Dollar Tree has like the individual metal rings, but I wasn't able to find that. And at Dollar Tree, when you can't find what you need, sometimes you have to get creative. So I'm gonna be using my wire cutters to cut off the excess rings because I just wanna have the largest ring. Next, I'm going to be wrapping this project with some nautical rope. You can either purchase the individual ones at Dollar Tree or you can purchase a large spool off of Amazon. I'm gonna start by wrapping the nautical rope around one edge of my wreath. And then I'm just going to wrap it as tightly as possible and hot gluing probably every third wrap. Sometimes when you're doing these wrapping projects, they look like they take a while, but really they don't take that much time. So I'm gonna wrap it around and hot glue it in place. Now I did leave a little bit of section because I'm gonna be putting some greenery there. So I didn't feel like I needed to cover it, but you can always do that. I'm gonna add some painter's tape to the bottom two thirds of my wreath because I'm gonna take this outside and spray paint the top. Thank you. 
I'm going to be spray painting with a flat white spray paint. Now, anytime you spray paint like a fabric or a rope, you're going to have to use more spray paint than you would for like a glass or a plastic. So I'm just going to do a nice generous coat. I'll probably end up doing about three coats for this to give it a nice white look. Once that has a chance to dry, I will take off the painter's tape. And next I'm gonna come in with a variety of florals that I already had on hand. For the base, I'm gonna be using this Dusty Miller, which is a floral that you can pick up at Walmart. And what I like to do is remove all of the leaves and hot glue those in place individually. I find that this gives me a little bit more freedom to kind of move pieces around and give it the look that I want. I like to add in you know, maybe two beads of hot glue if I can. Next, I'm gonna be using lamb's ear that you can purchase it at Walmart as well. I think whenever you're creating a wreath, if you can use a variety of florals it's just going to give you a nice texture. So I say at least do maybe two or three different florals whenever you're putting together a look. And for all of my florals greenery, I either buy it from Dollar Tree, Walmart, or sometimes I will buy like the boxwoods I'm putting on, I will grab those at Hobby Lobby because I'll buy them in like a big garland spool. Next up, I'm gonna use a little bit of twine to hang it from. And here's how my wreath turned out. I love looking on Pottery Barn's website for inspiration. And when I saw these two containers, I knew that I could do a dupe from Dollar Tree. So I picked up two glass containers from Dollar Tree as well as their wood pieces. Now I'm gonna take the wood pieces and I'm gonna hot glue them to the bottom of one of my containers. I'm gonna be adding in four that are the same height to create legs. Now in the picture, one of the containers was smaller than the other one. So I took those wood pieces and cut them in half so that I could make one of my glass containers shorter than the other. I'm gonna take the four pieces that are about the same height and I'm gonna hot glue them in place. Now in the Pottery Barn image, the vases had like this really cool white texture to them. So to mimic that look, I went to Hobby Lobby and I found some scrapbook paper. They have some scrapbook paper that's textured and a lot of times they have them on sale for like four or five for a dollar. So I picked up two sheets. So I'm gonna start by putting my glass vase on top and then I'm just going to put a line where I need to cut. I want them to be exactly the right size to cover this vase. And then again, I'll use my cutting mat to just draw a line across. And I'll cut this out. Next, I'm going to wrap the paper around my jar, make sure that it fits correctly, that it doesn't need to be cut off anymore. And then once I have it in place where I want it to be, I'm gonna hot glue it. And I'm gonna repeat these steps with both of my containers. And here's how the containers look sitting out on my side table. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool vase. So I grabbed this vase at Dollar Tree that kind of has the top portion larger than the bottom portion. And I'm going to put painter's tape about halfway down and I'm just going to add in some black chalk paint that's ink by Waverly. And then I will take off the painter's tape. I did about two coats of the chalk paint. Next, I found this wire jute twine ribbon, and I wanted it to be very natural and free forming. So what I did was I just hot glued one side to the back, and then I just kind of let the twine kind of figure out how it wanted to be placed around there. I didn't want it to be sticking onto the vase. And then once I kind of got it free flowing, I hot glued the other end to the back. And so it's just kind of hanging out there so everyone will look a little bit different. And then I'm gonna add in a candle that I had on hand. And that's it, like really simple, easy project that just looks great in any grouping. So I love picking up the terracotta pots at Dollar Tree. I'm all the time grabbing them and they do kind of go quickly, but right now I have a pretty good collection of them. So I'm gonna start by putting on some white chalk paint and chalk paint really gets soaked up on terracotta pots, so you don't need a lot. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my gloves and I'm just kind of moving the paint around with my hands just to give it a really natural look. It doesn't look like it was brushed on at all. To distress the edges, I'm using this Sharpie. And a Sharpie is a great alternative to using any sort of paint. It's just quick and easy, and it gives you that same look. And I'm just going to be coloring it in on top because I wanted the tops to be completely black. I'm going to be using my favorite succulent from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to place it into the pots. Super easy, but when you make a grouping of three, they look so nice together. So I grabbed three of the largest vases at Dollar Tree and I'm also going to be using some nautical rope. I'm going to put hot glue around the base of my candle holder and as I go around I'm just going to add additional hot glue. And I'm just going to put these up until I think it looks good. I think I went around maybe seven or eight times and then I'll hot glue it in place. I'm gonna repeat the same steps with my other two candles and making sure that they're the exact same height. Then I'm going to add in some Dollar Tree rocks. You can buy Dollar Tree rocks in a bunch of different types. Dollar Tree rocks come in several different forms. You can buy white ones. They have more natural stone looking ones. I ended up using two bags of the white. Now one of the tricks that I like to do is I like to put in the candles and then after I get the candles in place, I'm gonna add in more rocks around the edge so it doesn't just look like my candles are sitting on the top. These candles I got in a pack from Ikea, but really you can buy candles from anywhere. Now to sit these out, I found these cool wood platforms in the Target dollar spot, the Bullseye Playground, and I just love the way they look. I think they look great in a grouping, but you could use these in so many different decor areas. They would look great sitting out on your kitchen table or your dining room table, but I love the way they turned out and they were really easy to make.
So next up, we're gonna make a really quick wreath that I like to put together on like my hutch or anywhere where you need like a small wreath. Dollar Tree sells these really natural looking wreath forms. They also have this sticker that says grateful, blessed, and thankful. And the scrapbook paper I just picked up at Hobby Lobby. So I'm gonna start by creating a base for my sticker. I'm going to just pull the scrapbook paper through my wreath. These wreath forms, you can lift up the um, little sides pretty easily. So just grab one of the forms and just kind of pull it through. Then I'm going to cut out a little triangle on either side to kind of make this look like ribbon that I've strung through. I'm going to add a white piece of paper that I cut out to put on top just so that the words really stand out. You can use printer paper. To distress the edges, I'm just going to use a Sharpie along the edges and then I'll hot glue that into the middle of my sign. Next, I'll just add on my blessed sticker and I think it really helps it stand out. To finish off the wreath, I grabbed a couple of succulents that I'm going to hot glue to the bottom. And this is a cute little piece that you can add to any grouping. So next up, we're gonna make a plant hanger. I grabbed some macrame rope off of Amazon and I'm going to cut so I have four long strings. Now with macrame, you wanna make your strings longer than you think because once you're doing all your knots, sometimes it can make it a lot smaller. So I cut off pretty long pieces. Then I'm gonna be using that ring on the Dollar Tree plant hanger and string it through so that it's in the middle. Once I get that, I'm gonna tie it in a big knot at the top. Now I find that it's easier when I'm working on something to hang it up. So I'm gonna take two of my strings and go down probably about, I don't know, maybe six inches, and I'm gonna tie it in a knot. I'm gonna repeat that with my other string. So I will have four knots. Now I'm going to go down about another six inches and make another knot. And I'll repeat that with my other strings. So now I'm going to take one string from one knot group and another string from another knot group and tie them into a knot. And I'll repeat that with my other three strings.
I grabbed a planter from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be spray painting it with this chalk spray paint by Rust-Oleum. I tried this out this year and honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the chalk spray paints. Um, maybe I just haven't found the right one yet, but I just prefer maybe a flat spray paint. And I'm gonna tie a big knot at the bottom of my planter. Now, then I'm gonna open it up and then stick my planter so that the knot is at the bottom of my planter. Then I'm gonna go to the bottom and cut all the strings off so that they're the same length. And then I'm gonna go back in and fray the bottom of the strings. Now you can add any planter that you like. I had an Ikea plant on hand that I'm going to put into my planter. This was an easy way to make a plant hanger.